Hey guys, I'm Renico van Wijk, aka Nick van Wijk for Epitome Tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at object removal and replacement. So, this is the shot we took in a recent video shoot for Dry Waters Breakdown music video to be used for the removal and replacement. This is what we ended up with. He's forwarding time. Going to a better place. You know what I'm saying. Let's go see how we do that. So open up After Effects and import the file that you're going to be using. I've got my file already set up here. The first thing we're going to do is scroll through the shots and decide what you want to remove and what do you want to replace that with. So what we've decided to do is use this removal technique to remove the dial and the clock arms and then replace it with new clock arms and just animated in After Effects. Right click in this panel so we can create a null object first. Then click on your video clip and we're going to be tracking motion. If you don't have your tracking panel here you can go up to Windows or Window rather and click on the tracker. We're going to be tracking motion so click on track motion and just the normal default settings. So now with the tracker, you want to select a point that has high contrast. So once that is selected, we can analyze forward with this button. After all that's done, we can just say edit target and we're gonna be choosing the null object, the tracker there, say okay and we'll just apply that. Now you want to export a frame. I'm going to be using this first frame. How you export it is go up to composition, say frame as, and we'll say file. Then with this option you can select where you want to save it and say render. After it's rendered we'll go into Photoshop with that file. Once you've opened your file in Photoshop we can just create a new layer and choose the spot healing brush tool and just make sure content aware is selected and also sample all layers that will sample the layer below and start removing this. You can always increase your brush size with a open bracket like that and with the healing brush tool you just simply click and drag. We are going to select the pen tool, create a new layer, and we're just going to try and zoom in here. And click, 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 just around that arm. Let's just make it a little bit longer. And close it off. Once you've closed off that path, you can go into this panel here, Path Panel, and you'll see there's a, the path that you created. Right click on that and say Make Selection. Click OK. And we are going to fill that one with the color that is on that arm. So by holding down Alt, you have your color picker, and we'll just select a color that the arm already had and fill it with one of those colors. And if you click, if you um, use the shortcut Control D, you can deselect, zoom out, and there's your arm. You can see it's a bit flat now and everything, but we we'll, we'll fix that. We'll make it look better later on with shadows and stuff. So that's fine. Okay, using this technique, you'll do all your arms. Okay, once you've uh, redrawn all your objects or whatever you're using. And there is a part that is pretty difficult to replicate. We can just cut it and try and cut it as good as possible. So what I use usually is the quick selection tool here. Just make sure your sample all layers is selected before you start the selection. And if you click and drag, it'll select a part there. But as you can see, there's more of it is selected. So we'll just use Alt to uh, click and drag those away. We can go into Refine Edge 
and just refine this edge a little bit give it a little bit of a radius there maybe smoothen it up a bit put some feather on there and increase the contrast there we go once that's done you just go to your background layer copy and paste so now we can see if we turn off the background image there we have our dial we have our clock arms and we have our removal layer looks a bit whack there but once it's tracked and put in some shadows and motion blur it'll look all shiny like a new clock yeah we're clock makers now what about that yup now we can just save this image as a photoshop file so let's open that file in after effects now to import it you can double click in this panel in the project panel on my desktop i've saved it there as watch edit open it up and now a panel is going to open asking you make it editable layers or merge layers into footage we want to be able to edit it so we'll say okay and it just created a new comp throw it in there so on this whole thing we'll just do a fast blur put a little bit of blur like one or two so we'll go to the first frame select your imported photoshop file that is now a composition we call it watch edit and click on this pick whip and we'll just drag and drop it onto the null object that we've created so now that that composition is tracked to your null object we can just test it out and as you can see that's a pretty good track right there next up we're going to be animating the clock arms so just go into your composition there and all your photoshop layers is right in here so what we're going to do is we're going to move the anchor point of each clock arm so that it is in the middle of the dial so that it rotates around that dial and the way we do this is to select okay let me just turn this off so we can see it easier that is just your toggle transparency grid so you can toggle that on and off so the way you're going to do this is select the hand that you're going to be working with let's start off with the minute clock hand and press a to open up the anchor point there and we'll just move that anchor point by holding down y and that is the anchor point move moving tool and we'll just move the anchor point there and we'll do this with each hand once that is finished you can start testing it out by selecting one of your hands and pressing the R key to go into rotation and just see if it rotates correctly around that middle point and we'll do this with each hand next thing to do is to add keyframes so we'll start off adding a keyframe here for the minute clock hand we'll start at zero let's add a rotational keyframe on each layer we'll just have to go back and see how long our clip is it's about you can see here it's about 6.2 seconds we'll just zoom in here and go to about let's say five seconds and we'll kind of make it stop there so we'll start off with a seconds hand and just give it about a 10 rotation there and then the minute clock 16 rotations then the hour clock we'll give that one about 24 and the day clock finally about 32 just so they don't move the same speed then we'll select all our keyframes right click and choose easy ease so the animation will just go come in slowly and then go quicker but it looks a little bit rigid so we'll just turn on motion blur for all these layers and then turn it on here as well so we can preview it go back to your main composition once you're happy with your animation we can create some shadows by going into the comp selecting your layers copy creating a new composition call it shadows or shuhados 
as I might say, pasting it in there and just make sure your dot is right on top there. We'll go back and we will drag that shadows layer just beneath the watch layer that we've edited and we'll paste a fast blur on there. Okay, the problem with this one is we have the removal layer set on that on the shadows track now and once we pull down the opacity it pulls down everything with it. So what we'll do is create another composition and call it removal. Just say okay and we'll copy the removal from the original track there and paste it into the removal composition that we've just created. Remember to connect the shadows and the removal composition that we're dragging in now to the null object. Turn on this removal layer and turn off all the other removal layers. So we know there's one at the bottom that's blocking out the original dials and or dial and hands. So now we have those shadows. I can't really see them now because I've turned them down a bit. Let's make it about 70%. And let's just move that shadow a little bit by going into the anchor point. And just moving it to the right and a bit up. That looks pretty good. So we have some shadows. It, the final step we can make is to give it some camera shake. So to give it camera shake, we'll just create a new composition. I've got my composition here already, watch wiggle. So this file is a file that I've rendered out from this composition and uh, imported it in here. And as you can see, there's the file and I've created a null object. And within this null object, I've just added uh, two slider controls. So just type into your effects panel here on the right, slider control, drag in two of those, because we're going to be animating the wiggle expression, just to make the shake go from slow to fast. Um, as you can see, uh, it starts off slow, and then it gets bigger and faster and faster and faster, and then it stops as the clock stops as well. So how do I set up those slider controls? You have those two slider controls there now, and we just we can just alt click on the position right there. We'll type wiggle, open bracket, and we'll pick whip to the top slider there. Make a comma in the middle and pick whip to the second slider and close that one off with the close brackets. So now we are connected here. The first parameter in this wiggle expression, that whole thing there, it's connected to that top slider there, is the frequency of the shakes that's going to be happening. And the second parameter is the amplitude, how big the shake is going to be. So now that we've got that set up, you can just add in some keyframes. Let's delete those that we have. And we'll start off with a zero and zero. And click the stopwatches there. Go forward in time. And I want the frequency to get bigger up until, let's say, in the middle. And we'll make the frequency about 10 and the amplitude will make about 20. And select those keyframes and just add a e right click and just add an easy ease. Test that out. Okay, that shake looks pretty nice, but let's just make it stop here at the end. So a kind of a roll off here. We'll just make this one zero and that one zero. Let's test that out. So it's shaking, shaking, and stopping. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for joining in. Subscribe to our channel if you want to. 
if there's anything else any other tutorials that you guys might not find on the internet google has everything but i mean if you don't find anything give me a shout and i'll try my best to answer your questions and create some new tutorials new fun and exciting not like my voice because i'm boring like that or something i don't know anyway thank you very much i'm renika van wyk aka nick van wyk for epitome tutorials thanks for joining in guys cheers Thank <laughs> you.